Good afternoon and welcome to the FCAN webinar, Mission Accomplished, Supporting Veteran Student Success. I am your host, Kathy McDonald, Assistant Director for Network Partnerships with the Florida College Access Network. I am thrilled to welcome on our call today guest presenter Jason Miller, Associate Director with the Office of Veterans Success at the University of South Florida. Jason oversees the holistic programs and support services provided to over 3,800 student veterans and veteran dependents enrolled at the university that include support in admissions, benefits, academic enhancement, career readiness, wellness, and community building and partnerships. As a recent transitioning veteran, Jason has firsthand experience with the current military transition model and navigating to the Department of Veteran Affairs as a newly disabled veteran. Jason retired from active duty in 2016 as a lieutenant colonel after 26 years of military service in the United States Army, having served both stateside and overseas in numerous command and staff positions from platoon level through division level, most notably with the 101st Airborne Division Air Assault. Jason deployed in support of Operating Enduring Freedom, Operation Iraqi Freedom, and Operation United Assistance. Jason holds a Bachelor's of Science degree in Aerospace Engineering from Embry-Riddle Aeronautic University and a Master of Science degree in Engineering Management from the University of Missouri, Rolla. Jason is happily married and is a proud parent of three wonderful children. Thank you for your service, Jason. I am also super excited to welcome on our webinar today guest presenter Kenneth Narwhal, who is the Veteran Support Coordinator with the Office of Veteran Success, also at USF. Ken is responsible for the administration of the industry recon program that matches USF student veterans with business professionals to help them learn and network in the field of study they want to work in after graduation. Ken also serves as the office's development officer, connecting donors who want to make a difference through philanthropic support that promotes student veteran success. Ken retired from active duty in 2010 as a master sergeant after 21 years of military service in the United States Air Force. While on active duty, Ken served in combat communications with a variety of both joint and command assignments. Ken deployed in support of Operation Enduring Freedom, Operation Fervent Archer, and Operation Southern Watch. He holds a Bachelor of Science degree in Health Science from Trident University International. Ken is happily married and is the proud parent of two wonderful children and two amazing grandchildren. Thank you also for your service, Ken. Now, a bit of housekeeping before we get started today. Um, first, we welcome your questions. This is, as you know, FCAN, we're all about learning together, so please feel free to submit your questions at any time in the dashboard uh, that should be on the right side of your screen if you're dialing in from your desktop computer. We'll allow time at the end, but you can enter your questions at any time, and I encourage you to do so. Second, please share what you're learning on your favorite social media platform. On Twitter, you can find us at FL College Access, and you can find our guest presenters at USFOVS. Please use the hashtag FCAN so we can find you and hear what's resonating with you. Finally, the webinar is being recorded. All materials will be available within a week of the recording, and you can find copies of these slides that we're using today in your webinar dashboard. Now, a quick bit of who FCAN is for those of us who may be joining us um, and are unfamiliar with our work. The Florida College Access Network is the heart of a movement to ensure today's students are prepared for tomorrow's jobs. Our mission is to create and strengthen a statewide network that catalyzes and supports communities to improve college and career preparation, access and completion for all students. Our vision is to see at least 60% of working age Floridians holding a high quality post-secondary degree or credential by the year 2025. We do our work in three primary ways, shining a light on promising practices at the local and state level. First, through our local college access networks, which is made up of cross-sector leaders that collaborate to provide more support for student success. Second, we publish research and data on evidence-based practices and policy opportunities to strengthen Florida's talent pool. And finally, our statewide initiatives provide schools and community organizations resources to help students continue their education after high school. Now, a little bit about the veterans in Florida. <clears throat> 
1.5 million Floridians age 18 and older are veterans in the state of Florida, which represents 9% of the population. Florida is a leading state in terms of military separations with over 15,000 service members moving to the state last year. We're also a state where education expenditures are significant. Nearly $1 billion of VA expenditures for education and voc rehab was spent in the state of Florida in 2017, which represented 7.5% of the total national expenditures. Florida also ranked third in veteran education benefit usage. Over 63,000 Florida veterans used education benefits trailing only Texas and California. Post 9-11 GI Bill benefits were the most commonly used, although over 7,400 dependents also took advantage of the, their VA education benefits. And even though education benefit usage is down in recent years, it's still more than double the levels we saw in the early 2000s in the state. Florida veterans perform well in post-secondary education. They outperform their non-veteran peers in terms of earning some college credit or degrees at higher rates to the tune of about 10 percentage points, 67% for veterans versus 57.6% overall for their non-veteran peers. So to get us started, we want to know a little bit about all of you attending, and we'd love to know more about what types of support you currently offer your veteran students. So let me launch the poll there. You can vote for as many supports as you currently offer. Choices are assistance in processing VA education benefits offering portfolio credit for joint service transcripts, helping translating military skills into one's employer's value, offering faculty and staff training to better support our veteran students, and finally, academic support, helping veterans transition to higher ed. So if you can vote, let us know what you're currently doing, Give that another couple of seconds. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and close that out. And then let me share with you the results. So we're seeing about 75% of you are offering assistance processing education benefits and 80 percent offering academic support so a lot of the supports are in those key targeted areas uh, fewer it looks like are using portfolio credit career services although more than half of you are offering faculty and staff training which is great to help them know the best ways to support their your students so great let me go ahead and put that away um, now, to get us started in terms of seeing why the Office of Veteran Success at USF continues to win awards and recognition just about every year, let me share a short two-minute video overview so you get a sense of what they're all about. The Office of Veteran Success is a place where veterans who are attending the University of South Florida can go to help them be successful. It can help them with admissions, to graduation, and then actually we help them beyond that into a career. When I heard they had veteran services, I thought they just stamped the GI Bill paperwork. I didn't know all of what would transpire, and I didn't realize that they would help so much. You have a lot of veterans that are working there, so they know exactly what you've been through and they know how to help you. They just have that, that atmosphere to them and that camaraderie that is very similar to being active duty. What better student population to serve than those that have served? Helping them get to that point where they can do what they've always dreamed of doing. The Veterans Office here is, has been really helpful as well with resumes, cover letters, overall just how to market myself. They really make you feel as though you are a part of the university while still maintaining your identity as a veteran, which is really, really important for a lot of people. 
I think the most difficult part of my transition was leaving a kind of a family team oriented environment to going to um, workplaces where it's like every man for himself. They got me back in control of the out of control nature of the stress in my brain. I, I went from having less than a 2.0, which kicked me out of school, to I have a 3.25 now, I'm getting straight A's. And I, I do owe it all to the people that work at Office of Veteran Success. I was able to kind of refine myself and rekindle my love for service. If it wasn't for them, I'd probably be struggling or falling behind, so they, they mean everything. There's no way that I can repay it, them for what they've done for us, and I'm eternally grateful for them. Hopefully that gave you a, a quick sense of what they're all about. And with that, let me turn over the floor to Jason, who will get us started. Jason, the floor is yours. Well, thank you so much, Kathy. And uh, I appreciate uh, the opportunity to be here uh, with you and the others that have joined us and uh, just, uh, you know, spend some time sharing uh, some of the things that we're able to do here for our student veterans. and. Uh, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, share those with folks that can use that uh, and uh, perhaps even learn some things from them as well through the Q&A. So uh, really looking forward to this time with you. And uh, if we could go ahead and uh, go through the slides. Um, I have an outline slide that I don't see yet. Uh, but what we're going to talk about today really focuses on Thank you. Um, focuses on, uh, you know, kind of the history of our office. I know uh, for many, uh, they're a one-man show, two-man show. Perhaps they're just starting up. Perhaps they've been around for a while and they're stagnant. And, and you know, just getting an understanding of how we got uh, established and, and have grown uh, and how our system works and our overall organization. Uh, I'll give you a glimpse of what our student population looks like with regard to student veterans and so forth. Uh, and then really what, what our office uh, does and, and why we exist really uh, is what we'll uh, finish up with. Uh, and so really going to our departmental success, um, you know, we've been very fortunate uh, to be recognized. Um, if you could advance the slide, that'd be great. Um, we've been very fortunate to be recognized many times, um, you know, for the work that we're doing uh, on behalf of our student veterans here. And, uh, you know, some of that is, is opportunity meets preparedness, uh, and others are, uh, you know, wow, this is something that we're doing, and, you know, maybe we were the first to have it or first to do it or uh, see the impacts of it. And so uh, we've been very fortunate uh, to receive these kinds of recognitions. Uh, and quite frankly, our students uh, know, and I know for some that, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a poll out there or a survey for everything just about, and uh, so it depends on, you know, which flavor of survey you like or what periodical you like, and I can tell you from our students' feedback, uh, the Military Times uh, magazine and the Military Times articles that, that talk about colleges really resonates with with veterans, and uh, we've we've received that feedback firsthand, especially when we started hitting number one and number two uh, year after year. We we had students inform us that they moved to Tampa because they wanted to go to one of the best schools for veterans, and they'd never been to Florida before. And obviously, there's all kinds of good reasons to come to Florida, and so that's that's also in our in our uh, you know win column is just having a great location. Uh, and, and really a huge veteran, as Kathy illustrated, a huge veteran population and community uh, in this area really adds to that success. Uh, you know, the, the two VA hospitals that we have locally, uh, both in Tampa and St. Petersburg, uh, the ability to have the USF campus in three locations, which you'll see here in a second, uh, throughout the Tampa Bay area is helpful. Uh, and just, you know, the military community and the the bases and all of that that are that are nearby. It's just it makes sense to have uh, a successful veteran program to support all of the folks that are here. And so, like I said, we've been fortunate and, and appreciate uh, the recognition 
uh, thus far. Uh, a little bit more historical background on our uh, kind of how we formed and you know the as as most schools that have that have been processing GI Bill benefits since the, the mid 70s um, at least major universities we've had a, a person on campus for decades doing that uh, but you know as you recall back in 08 09 uh, the proliferation of the the 9 11 GI Bill and the transferring to to uh, student or excuse me to dependents of veterans and just the downsizing of the force after surging in Iraq and and so forth really caused a need for uh, the VA recognized the need to do something and so uh, we actually the University of South Florida was looked at as a location for the vet success on campus uh, program uh, as a test and so with that brought you know some opportunities that maybe other schools haven't had the chance or the opportunity to experience and so we've had a, a real good connection with the VA since about 2009 uh, and with that money that you see there uh, came an individual as well uh, vet success on campus counselor who really helped the VA uh, between our school and two or three other schools uh, I know San Diego State had one uh, early on um, and uh, between our school and a few others, we were able to establish the need that, hey, there's some benefit, uh, or excuse me, there's some benefit uh, and, and positive outcomes that can, that can come from having a VA person on campus. And so uh, we've, we've had our vet success on campus counselor here for a while. Uh, that sparked the university really, uh, really it was uh, kind of going on at the same time. The university recognized that need as well. Uh, our Dean of Undergrad Studies at the time who was a veteran and understood the, the lay of the land, uh, really uh, established this office as an office, uh, brought in a director and said, hey, let's figure out what you need and, and let's get there. Uh, and through a lot of, again, support from the community, you see Birdies for, uh, for the Brave, uh, they're uh, an opportunity there to, to receive some funds to do some renovations and some other things with the space that the university did give us. Uh, helped us really establish a great place on campus uh, for students to, to to come and be and and you know be with each other as well as receive other services uh, as they're available. Uh, the J.P. Morgan grant uh, is a very interesting story for those that are uh, curious how that happened. Um, we were actually uh, unsolicited. Uh, had a phone call. They called the office. They pulled our office. Uh, talked to students. Uh, and based on the answers they got, uh, they said, hey, it sounds like you're doing great things down there already. We want to give you some money to keep on doing some great things. And, and, and that was a huge catalyst uh, for helping us develop a, uh, the ability for an academic program and a career program and some other things that, that really have just taken off since we were able to, to get some funds to, to hire some people and do that. Uh, and then you can see we've had some other uh, smaller grants that have that have been uh, you know uh, made available to us over the the recent years. Uh, some legislative history: uh, we did receive a one-time uh, based on the J.P. Morgan grant. Uh, we did we did get a, a one-time legislative appropriation, which then again helped us build some metrics to to provide a. Uh, I don't know that it's called a special appro appropriation. Um, but uh, it's a year-to-year. -year. Uh, we've been fortunate enough to, to have it year after year since 2016 from the, the Florida legislature. Um, but uh, it's 175 for, for some academic and career support personnel. Um, and so what are, you know, just for those that don't know, the University of South Florida uh, recently consolidated. Uh, we had three uh, once upon a time, we had four uh, campuses throughout the uh, Central Florida, Tampa Bay area, uh, all the way to Lakeland and down to Sarasota. Um, the Lakeland, you know, broke off, and uh, the other three all maintain separate accreditations. But recently, we have consolidated consolidated under one university, just geographically distributed. And so, uh, for those that were aware that we had additional campuses, these campuses are in fact. Uh, one university now, uh, same standards, same programs. Uh, I can tell you from a veteran's perspective, it's always been really one, one, one team 
with regard to how we, you know, processed benefits and offered services, uh, we've maintained an office uh, at St. Pete and at Sarasota Manatee uh, with sharing some funds and with some other agreements uh, to, to have an assistant director or coordinator at each one of those locations uh, with the ability to, to have work studies and so forth. And, and you can see from our organization chart, it's, um, it's very busy. What I want you to understand from this is there is there's about a you know a four person full time equivalency going on at Sarasota, about a nine at uh, at St. Pete, and then um, with our full time staff, part time staff, and our work studies, which we have a pretty sizable work study program uh, through the VA, uh, we're we're roughly around uh, 30 or so FTE here on the main campus, um, which. You know, if you look at our demographics, um, we've got a pretty sizable student population uh, overall on all three campuses. The overall student population is about 50,000. Uh, for student veterans, uh, active student veterans, we probably have about 2,300, 2,400 uh, throughout the year. And then each semester, it ranges between about 1650 to 1800 student veterans that are enrolled in classes that particular semester. Uh, and that's not counting uh, dependents. Uh, and so you can see on the student pop, uh, we do have a sizable veteran population that doesn't use depend, uh, excuse me, doesn't use benefits, um, either because they have already uh, used all their benefit or uh, otherwise didn't qualify uh, or was under a legacy system that's no longer available. Uh, before the uh, the Forever GI Bill started. Uh, we do have a, a small active service uh, population that we that we know of, you know, and I'm, I'm sure all schools face this, uh, the, the, the dilemma of how to identify your student veterans and, and we've we've worked in different ways over the year to try to, to, to come up with good ways of identifying them, uh, you know, through the admissions application and and we feel like we're at a point that we're we're in the 90 plus percentile of we feel like this is our accurate population of student veterans and not just those using benefit. Um, the the male female gender mix is probably not uh, you know surprising to most. Uh, I do believe 24 percent female is is a little bit higher than what the uh, the services have active duty right now uh, for gender mix and then. Uh, not surprising at all to anybody who's had student veterans on their campus. Uh, our average age was roughly around 34, uh, you know, with many of them uh, much older than that. And so uh, definitely not your typical student. Um, and you can see uh, across the campuses, uh, majority of our students are here on Tampa. Um, you know, and the St. Pete campus and Sarasota campuses are, are designed that way. They're, they're much more uh, regional campuses. Um, the degree programs, uh, quite a sizable graduate level uh, population. Uh, it's been as high as 35% at times. Uh, and so we're actually seeing more and more each year um, that come into the graduate programs and especially terminal degrees as well. Uh, full-time, part-time, you can see it's about 65% or so uh, that are full-time students. Um, and then just some of our, you know, other uh, things that we're proud of, you know, this is this this kind of chart just makes you feel good. Um, you know, student success is not just graduating a veteran, and you'll see that here from us in just a second. But um, you know, when we can see a veteran, you know, achieve that goal uh, after you know many semesters of hard work, and for most of them, years and years of you know trying to get this done, uh, it's pretty satisfying. And 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 we've been fortunate to just see our graduations. Uh, get larger and larger each year uh, as we continue to, to help these veterans through school. Uh, some of our other success metrics, um, this is really some averages of our last several years, uh, but you know we're, we're, we're inside the, the, you know, the band where you want to be on each one of these rates, uh, and the GPA I think is a pretty, uh, it's a pretty telling uh, uh, you know, statement there. Uh, for those that uh, are fighting any kind of stereotypes with student veterans. Um, but, you know, we have several that fit into that mold where, you know, they went to college, uh, failed out, joined the military, and they come back, and now they're killing it. 
uh, there's there's so many of those kinds of success stories that we're very proud to be a part of as well. Um, a little bit more, and I'm going to let Ken do some talking here in a few minutes. So, uh, but a little bit more about just you know what it is and how our office operates. Uh, this one slide called the operational strategy slide. Hopefully, it's on your screen, and um, you know it, it, it encompasses really you know our strategy, our mission, our vision, and the end state. Um, you know what you don't see on this slide is, you know, the reason our office exists, our why. Uh, you know, we've made it a point over the last several uh, years to, to really focus in on the why because, you know, sometimes you get running and you can get a program started and things seem to be working and there's positive metrics and, you know, that's all good and it sometimes it feeds itself and then, you know, you just keep going and going, but, you know, are you, are you doing what you set out to do, you know, and that kind of thing. And so, Going back to that, we, uh, we as an office came out with, you know, the why that we exist is to make an impact in a student's life. Um, you know, if, if they don't need admissions help, they're not going to come to us for admissions help. If they don't need, you know, academic help, they're not going to, you know, so it's not, a, it's not a failure or a omission of any kind. But when we interact with students, uh, and there, we have several opportunities throughout their uh, matriculation to do that. Uh, we want to make an impact. We want to have a positive impact in their life. And so uh, for so many of our students, um, you know, once they get to know us and they realize the, the type of office that they have available to them, uh, they take advantage of it. And, you know, as you saw in the video, um, I, I love that video uh, because every single one of those was a genuine testimony from a person who we just said, hey, would you mind, you know, going on film for a minute? Um, and especially the one gentleman that said he was failing out of school, uh, it's night and day, uh, and it's really, it's really something to see an individual's life change uh, from what could have happened to, to what it is now, and it's remarkable to be a part of something like that. And so uh, we'll talk about a little bit of the, the ones you see highlighted there. We'll talk about some of the things that we do uh, that I think are impactful uh, on students and, and you know, uh, there's certainly everything that's listed on here is up for grabs with regard to questions and, and, and so forth. So we can go into greater detail uh, based on your, your needs and so forth. But um, some of the things that we uh, that I think that we're doing and we're doing well, uh, it starts with admissions and orientation. Um, you know, we've got a we've got a great relationship uh, with uh, our orientation office. Uh, and if you could go to my next slide, that'd be great. The uh, the orientation office really, uh, you know, they're doing a ton of yeoman's work to to keep, as you can imagine. I mean, the 50,000 strong population at this university, thousands and thousands come through their doors every every semester, and so uh, they make it a point to 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 stay linked in with us. Uh, with regard to veteran orientation, and we have a we have a spot on the schedule for veterans to meet with us, uh, and so it is it's it's a mandatory spot. So it's as if you didn't complete orientation, you wouldn't be able to enroll. Uh, it's just another segment of their orientation, but it gives us the opportunity uh, to shake their hand, to give them a face with a name, um, and to be able to fix things like day one, you know, and sometimes prior to day one, which is which is extremely helpful, uh, especially when it comes to, to one of the biggest friction points for our student veterans transitioning, even from a smaller school to a larger school, but many of them straight out of uh, military service into school, um, you know, is money. And, and so being able to fix those things that, that have uh, an effect on their finances and being able to do it quickly and give them that reassurance uh, pays huge dividends on both sides. Uh, gives them the ability to, to start school on a good foot and at the same time it gives us the credibility to be able to, to know that they have someone they can come to and, and from Jump Street they've seen the results of it. And so we've, we've been very uh, fortunate to maintain a good relationship with orientation and um, you know, there's there's probably nothing magical about our slides and the information we give them. It's really the the one-on-one -on -one connection that we're able to make, uh, especially for those that need it, because um, not everybody's needs are the same. Um, you know, we're, we've been very fortunate, again, with a strong veteran community. 
uh, and supporters. Uh, we've been able to add scholarships to to those, uh, you know, to students that are attending here uh, outside of things that are just available to the the general public veteran. Um, we've we've been able to to have nearly 20 endowed scholarships added to that list. Uh, some of those are uh, needs-based, many of them are competitive, uh, but it's the opportunity for a student to be able to, to tap in some additional resources, uh, especially when they need it, uh, is, is definitely helpful. Um, one of the things that I know, I know several schools do it because I've, throughout my talks with others in the veteran community, you know, offering courses and and curriculum for for transitioning and and things specific to veterans is not a new thing and um, but we've been able to 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 really develop a nice um, one two punch really uh, having two three credit hour courses uh, and I'll let Ken tell you a little bit more about the one he's a part of but uh, the first one is really for students coming straight into the university uh, and it gives them the opportunity to to one fill up their schedule if it's one of those transitioning veterans who, hey, may not, they may be pre, you know, engineering, pre this, pre that, uh, and, and need a full schedule for an elective credit. Um, and so it's fully covered by the VA, but it also gives them the huge, huge advantage of being able to connect with other veterans. Um, you know, as, as Kathy mentioned, um, there's, a, there's a, you know, there's a feel where uh, students come to, to the university uh, as a veteran and, and feel out of place. You know, they feel, you know, like a fish out of water. Um, they're older than everyone else. Uh, they don't look the same. They've got different experiences. They got a job. They got a family. You know, and and so for many, that's a difficult transition uh, to really feel connected, especially you know having just left or left a, left recently a community where they did feel connected. Uh, and so this three credit class, uh, it's called Vet Success. Um, it just gives them an opportunity to connect with one another and receive some information and, and obviously some, some coursework that, you know, is geared for them. It's, it's for their use as much as they put into it is what they're going to get out of it. And so we've, we've seen a lot of success with that with regard to, to matriculation, to, to persistence and retention and so forth. Um, and I'll, I'll let actually Ken, is, I've been talking a while now, but um, Ken, Ken is involved in our second uh, three credit course, which is the, uh, the job search class, and I'll let him give you more about that. Hey, thanks, Jason. Thanks, everyone. Uh, yeah, my name is Ken Narwald. When I started here in December of 2015, there was a, there, there was, there was a, a gap there with our veterans. They were coming into school, and, and they were doing great here in school, but there was that gap when they, when they were ready to transition out of, out of college into a career. So sitting down with the staff here, our director, Dr. Larry Brow, we came up with a plan to start this veteran job search class. And the whole, the whole goal of that is, is to hopefully get them prepared better for that transition into a career. And what we, what we mean by that is one to three semesters out from them graduating, they can, they can take this course. And, and what we do in this course is we let them meet with uh, HR professionals. We, we work on know your why. Uh, like Jason said, the why is very huge. Um, if you're not going out and, and when you're transitioning out, if you don't know your why, why you want to do what you want to do, uh, that's going to be a short job. And, and the veterans have shown that if, if they don't find a, a job that they want to do and that they're passionate about, it'll be a quick turnaround, which isn't good for the employer or the veteran. So what we're trying to do there is, is create this approach where they can learn this while they're in school, while it's, it's low key low stress. They can learn this from these business professionals. And what we do is we bring in these professionals. They, they, they help us with this. We do HR panels. We do um, mock interviews. We do online interviews. Uh, we started that a couple of semesters ago where we have a company that, that sends our veterans a, an email saying, congratulations, you have been selected for a, an online interview for this position. And they have to schedule the interview and actually go through the online interview portion because data shows that most of our companies are doing that now. So why not help prepare them for that? So, uh, and then to end it all off, we're, we're, we're hoping that that turns into maybe an internship, uh, maybe their junior year if they're into the, 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 third, the third semester of the, uh, before graduation, they're taking job search, they can get an internship. So when that, 
that time comes for graduation, they can transition really smoothly into that career. So that's what the job, excuse me, the job search, the veteran job search class is all about. It's just trying to prepare them for that transition to the career, which, which, which leads right into my industry recon program, uh, which is uh, something that I started when I got here. When I started in 2015, I was in charge of the, uh, we had a mentoring program, which was, which was a great program, but it was just specifically mentoring. It wasn't really taking our veterans to that next level because it's all about educating the veteran and, and helping them make an educated decision. We had a lot of our, not a lot, but we had some of our veterans who were who were going down a path, uh, I want to be an electrical engineer. Well, why do you want to be an electrical engineer? I don't know. It's just what everybody else is doing. So they would go to school, get a degree, uh, use all their benefits, and then go into a job that they didn't really want to do. Again, going back to the why. So this industry recon program is a great program because a veteran can come to our office, sit down with, with me and say, hey, this is what I want to do. I connect them with someone in the local community who's doing that, and they can, they can learn. They can, they can network. They can go on the job training. They can, they can figure out if it's really what they want to do um, and make sure that that's the path they want to go on. And it's, it's, we've had really good results with the industry recon program. Um, uh, it's, it's a, numbers are, are, are what they are, but we've, we placed uh, veterans in uh, NASA. We placed them up at Dianetics up in uh, Birmingham, Alabama, up in Virginia with uh, some government contracting work, uh, down here locally with TICO and CAE. It, it's a program that works because it gives, it gives both sides a chance for a test run without a lot of strings attached. And the cool thing is, is that it's based on the veteran. So if Jason comes to me and says that he wants to connect with someone, I connect him with someone and that doesn't work out. That's okay. Uh, we'll find him somebody else. We'll just keep rolling until, until they can make that decision. And it's all about helping them educate themselves to make that decision. So that's what the industry recon is all about. And um, I'm proud to say that it's, it's working so far and it's because we have a great community here in Tampa and that we're, we're partnered with both USF Athletics and Mission Barbecue. We, we help our veterans feel a part of the community. We hold two networking events as well. We hold a spring networking event and a fall networking event in conjunction with our, our veteran courses. And it's just getting the vets indoctrinated into the community. It's just like on the video when uh, Lashana said, and, you know, sometimes when you leave the military, you forget that you still have a community, but now we, we can help them get back to that. So um, that's what we got going on in, in the industry recon program and, and the two vets and the two veteran courses. I appreciate that, Ken. And, uh, and so just to finish off this, and then we'll, we'll, we've just got a couple more slides. I wanted to mention our academic advising, uh, you know, as, as many schools probably do, uh, you're, you're, you're definitely focusing in on students that are potentially at risk, whether it be GPA or, you know, other forms of dismissal. And, and, and we as in kind have done that and, and still do. But um, what we tried to do in the last couple of years is really expand that uh, with the assets that we have available with tutoring, uh, vet to vet tutoring program and, and our academic coordinator, uh, you know, to give students an, an edge, an advantage, you know, so those that aren't struggling, you know, take advantage of these, these resources as well uh, and the advising and advocacy resources that we provide. Um, and it really has, has made a difference for those trying to get into grad school, trying to get, you know, into, into medical school and, and, and pursue advanced degrees and other things like that. And so, um, you know, can't say enough about the, the the folks that we have working in this office who really just give 110 percent to to help students wherever they are, whatever that need is. Uh, and so uh, to finish up, you know, we we do run a lot of programming. Um, you know, probably five or six events a semester to try to connect students with each other as well as the university. Uh, we've been very happy with our success in these. Uh, many of them are supported by nonprofit organizations and others within the community. And again, we can't say enough about the Tampa Bay area with regard to supporting veterans. And, and so we're very fortunate to be able to partner with a lot of great people to, to put on events. Um, we do have student organizations, uh, you know, and as, as students come and go, these organizations ebb and flow a little bit. And so some of them are, are restarts and others are, are on their own moving along. Um, we try to make sure we welcome students at the beginning of the year. Uh, super, super important, even the ones just returning. 
uh, and and it never ceases to amaze me, and I love it every time I see it. Um, but you see a student that's been struggling, and you you know you work with them and you try to help them, and sometimes you don't see the fruits of your labor off you know always, and uh, but something else happens, uh, and so it wasn't necessarily just what you did that helped them, but you see them come back the next semester and life is better, life is different, and, and things are just turned around. And it's, it's so rewarding uh, to be a part of an organization that can help someone like that, uh, especially uh, someone who served our nation as they have. Um, Ken talked about our partnership with athletics. Uh, I can tell you without our athletics program, uh, it would be difficult at times to connect uh, students to the university in, in, in regards to their age group and their families and their life. Uh, but when we make it available and, and students are able to bring their families out to an event or something like that and one, it gives the opportunity for the university to, to salute the service. And we probably had one of our best, if not the best, salute the service football games this past uh, weekend. And just remarkable the, the relationship that we're able to keep with these guys. And, uh, and really everyone else that you see on this list, uh, I'll give Ken an opportunity to, to highlight one or two that that you know really stand out and 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 help us make a difference in 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 the student's life. Yeah, the main one I want to one of the main ones I want to talk about is the Bay Area Manufacturers, uh, Bama. Uh, that was a, a connection I made through uh, the Tampa Bay uh, Chamber of Commerce, and uh, they're they're just a, a local organization here that is is all about manufacturing. And a lot of our veterans were when you think of manufacturing, they think of assembly line. They think of I'm going to go work in a factory. But uh, manufacturing is so much change that uh, if you're if you're not educating the veterans on it, they're going to they could possibly miss a great opportunity. So this was a great great way for us to to get the word out about manufacturing back to that industry recon, back to that education of the of the veterans. So the Bay Area manufacturers came out and they started being get involved with their classes and and being involved in some of our events and and now they 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 have scholarships for our veterans. So they they help our veterans now with with uh, with money. So that turned into that, and uh, of course, the Armed Forces Communications and Electronics Association, that was the same thing. That's in partnership with MacDill, CENTCOM, and SOCOM. Uh, all of them are great. All these companies are, are, are great. All these organizations are great. Um, I could say something about all of them, but uh, I know time doesn't allow. But if you don't have, and I, if you have an opportunity, get connected in some of these. Get to that Chamber of Commerce. You'll meet a lot of great companies through that Chamber, the Chamber of Commerce, and uh, and uh, that's where you can make a lot of connections. Thanks, Ken. Um, I think that is, that's it for what we wanted to present today, um, but we definitely are looking forward to uh, the questions that you might have uh, that we can help answer and, uh, you know, just be able to share uh, information, you know, you're sharing information uh, to us with your questions, so we're looking forward to that. Uh, thanks again, Kathy, for allowing us to, to be a part of this. Thank you both so much. You know, one of the things that I really appreciate about what you've shared so far is it's not just a list of top 10 benefits. It's really about creating that sense of community and creating that sense of belonging and giving them space and programming that gives them the opportunity to, to connect with their peers. So some of it's through the classes, some of it's through the programming. As um, one of the, the uh, folks on your video shared, you can sometimes feel like I just left this family, which was their their coworkers and their colleagues in the service, and now they're in a whole new environment that can feel very foreign. One of the things I didn't hear you share that I, I know you have is in your center, you actually have space for veterans to work and, you know, do group projects. And can you talk a little bit about your your actual center? Yes, absolutely, and uh, we uh, we are located uh, about center of campus, which is good in some ways, and you know, for the medical <laughs> folks, it's not because they're on the other side of campus near the hospitals. But um, you know, and so we've been fortunate to have enough space to 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 have dedicated space for student veterans to come, uh, collaborate, study, uh, tutor, uh, and so it's you know it's about 800 square feet of you know, space that probably looks like a lot of others that, that do have this kind of space, uh, microwave, you know, tables, chairs, uh, a couple separate rooms for, you know, small group stuff, lots of whiteboard, 
Uh, if you have any engineering students on your campus whatsoever, you know you need whiteboards because uh, as you saw in the video, we actually have a, a room that's glassed in with some plexiglass and they write their equations on the plexiglass yeah. if they don't have enough whiteboard. And, uh, and we welcomed that because, you know, you get six or seven of them in there and, and they're getting after it, especially during, you know, midterms and finals week. And uh, it's just really, it's really special to have a place uh, for them to come. You know, they don't always just study there. Uh, they connect with each other there. They eat their lunch there. Uh, and they're able to, you know, to do really just about anything that they need to there. Uh, and it's co-located in the same facility that we're in. So we have the ability to connect with them as well, um, you know, and, and do that. So, and, and we have that space given to us by the university, but it really partnering with those others like the Birdies for the Brave and uh, most recently an anonymous donor uh, who provided us funds to upgrade it, uh, gave us the ability to add, you know, four times as many computers, printing capability and some other things that, again, our, our academic students that are, you know, that are looking for that extra edge uh, in a place where that, you know, this, this university is a large campus, so going to the library can be daunting sometimes, eight floors, thousands and thousands of students. Uh, you'll probably have about 15 to 20 when this place is packed, mm -hmm. uh, but when they're in there, they're, they're getting out. It's really exciting. You know, you bring up a really great point in terms of support for students um, and support for your office supporting those students is your relationships with the employer community and their commitment to the veterans. And it, it seems like that's something that's grown over time. One of the things I was curious about is I know your services have evolved over time. What are, A, do you measure which services people take advantage of? And B, what are you seeing is uh, looking to be the most impactful services that your veteran students take advantage of? That's a good question. Um, and so the the ones that have evolved over time, uh, like in 15, 16, we were able to stand up the the, the vet to vet tutoring program and academic uh, enhancement program uh, and those. Um, we've got uh, a lot of students that take advantage of it. The ones that probably need to sometimes need a little uh, coaxing and prodding to get them get them through the door, um, and so we we really have you know in terms of measuring that success, I think we see we've seen our biggest uh, improvements or dividends with uh, incorporating the enhancement part in our orientation, and so literally from the day they meet our enhancement coordinator, they know that they're going to be scheduled at some point to meet with her early on. Uh, and if nothing else, just to make sure they're they're going to be on the right glide path. Um, but it builds that relationship early. And as you know, whether it's you know a, a, a health crisis, a mental uh, or academic or financial, you know, getting in front of something is the best way to handle any of that. So when crisis does occur, you're not trying to meet people for the first time. And so uh, we have seen a lot of success with that, incorporating that into our orientation. Um, it's still elective, but we're we're looking at other ways where you know um, we're we don't want to forcibly try to help them, but uh, you know uh, sometimes you know we 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 want to bring them we want to bring them in through the doors because yeah. once they're here, uh, they see their peers, they they hear from their peers. Uh, it's really a, a great thing. Um, you know, from from the standpoint of uh, some of our other metrics. Um, you know, Ken shared some in the career side uh, with regard to that gap. You know, we had so many students graduating and then still kind of, you know, hey, I don't really know this is the jobs aren't there. And so, um, you know, that's that was how the industry recon came to be. And so um, those are probably the two largest that stand out to me. Um, yeah. And great, great question. And related to industry recon, John is asking, have any vets changed career paths based on what they experienced in the industry recon program? Great question, John. Yes, we, we have had some that have changed. Uh, we had one that uh, was wanted to be an electrical engineer, went out, connected him with somebody and found out that that's not really what they wanted to do. He, and uh, now he's a business major. So it does happen. Uh, and that's what we hope happens as well. Right. I mean, that's that's a, that's an excellent point, um, and it's something we stress in our our vet success class as well. We have them do a a career uh, research project, yes. um, and of course, they're choosing it on the career that they're working towards already. And 
And some of these guys have been in, you know, the university here even a couple semesters, let alone a few semesters from graduation. And we have had students, when we ask them to look into those hard questions, after having them, you know, do all of the, the analysis on what their why is, and sometimes the light bulb goes on and it's like, wow, you know, but better now than later yeah. when their benefits gone and they're out in the marketplace and they're going from job to job. Cause that's from the research, that's what we've seen. Yeah. And you know, it, it, it's one of the other areas that I think you all do so well is that connection to the, the career in a couple of different ways. Number one, our service, um, our service leaders, they have amazing experience but civilians don't know how to look at their resume and understand that. So they need help translating their skills into a civilian world um, that an employer can understand. So uh, if you can share a little bit about that and then also about how you're building those relationships with employers because you know one of the things that I've heard from my veteran students is they're used to being mission driven and then sometimes they get out into the employer world and you know goals aren't as clear and and so are you working with employers to help them understand how to bring you know veterans in and help them to be successful in their space great question kathy um so what we do is we we have a couple programs for that but yeah we we hear that quite a bit and what we do is we also have a program called a lunch and learns or info sessions where we bring employers into our, our veterans academic commons and they sit down with the veterans. They, they talk to them about this. They look at resumes. They give them feedback on their resumes and help them translate those skills. We hit it also in the uh, two vet, the, the vet classes that we teach. Um, but that's one of the main things we, we hit. I, I also work with the, the Chamber of Commerce and the Tampa Bay Tech Forum and go out and we educate companies on how to hire veterans. It's not just veterans translating skills, like you said, it's also the employers understanding what those skills are. So I, I was at one meeting with Tampa Bay Tech Forum and uh, we had a, a company, a small company ask, well, how do I verify that they're a veteran? And we're like, well, look at a DD-214 and what's a DD-214? They had no clue. So that was, that was an, a way for us to to get out there and, and walk them step by step to transition for the veteran and what they go through as well. So uh, those are some of the things that we're doing. We've had really good success with the info sessions and the lunch and learns. Amazon has come out. We've also taken some veterans to uh, some of our local companies, Tech Data over in Clearwater. We took uh, 15 veterans to Tech Data. They spent a day with them, looking at resumes, talking to them, meeting leadership. Uh, working with their infinity groups. A lot of the companies have military infinity groups. So uh, those are the ways that we're able to, to help with that. That's wonderful. It's, um, you know, again, our, our veterans aren't coming to us just, you know, for the credential sake. They're really looking to make that transition and helping smooth the way by building those relationships with your local employers is so critical. Um, John had a, a follow-up question. Are there industry recon programs while they're taking their courses? Yes, that's really when we want them to take, to be in the industry recon program. Because um, that's helping them build that network. But yes, that that's where we want them. As soon as as soon as they feel like they're um, maybe at that point where they're starting to work on their their school work that is pushing them all of it is, but um, pushing them towards that program. That's when we want them in 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 the industry recon program. Okay, perfect. And um, Jolando is asking when you meet with new veteran students, do you offer them a handout or or something that shares what you do? I'm assuming part of it is in that orientation and onboarding, but how do you give them a sense of the breadth of support that you offer? Uh, a lot of it is in a and more so slide in web based formats. Um, you know, we you know we we run on a a relative, at least it feels like it many times, a tight budget. And so, um, you know, producing products for the sake of producing them, we don't do. Uh, we do make handouts uh, when the necessity is there. And really for our students, you know, they're they're not super big in, into the handout kind of thing. They take a lot of pictures with their phones. Uh, you know, we use social media quite a bit. Um, we're on, you know, all of the normal social media platforms, most of which I, I don't frequent, but 
uh, I've learned while doing this job uh, with Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and YouTube and uh, and so uh, but you know to your point um, you can't reach everyone the same way and so uh, we do have information that's hard copy uh, a lot of these face-to-face and and one-on-one -on -one appointments uh, or as Ken said info sessions um, but we're also this is something that we're working on now uh, we're trying to expand and get a um, a Canvas course, uh, and so Canvas is the, the learning platform that we use, uh, the Blackboard program, um, and get a, get a course that once you're identified as a veteran, there's a standard set of information that you're required to, you know, to navigate through, and, you know, there'll be test on learning and things like that, but it's also a resource that we can continue to add to, uh, you know, to, to, one, communicate with the students, quite frankly, and I've I'm, I would be interested to hear how other uh, programs are doing that. Just communicating sometimes with our student population. Um, you know, they know where to find us. We can't always find them, uh, or at least it's one-way communication sometimes. And so uh, being able to, to have a platform like Canvas, I think, is going to really help us in that regard uh, for at least positive feedback on what they're getting and um, that they, they are aware of some of the things. Yeah, uh, good point. Uh, you know, you had mentioned having a great relationship with admissions. When I, I'm assuming when somebody's applying, they're on the application. There's some question or designation of whether they're a veteran student, correct? That's correct. Okay, so so you at least have some some ability to know who's who's there. Um, you know, how do while the dependent population I know is much smaller than the the veteran population, how how are, do you see them utilizing their VA education benefits? Are they taking advantage of the breadth of supports that, you know, traditional veteran students are? Um, I would say, you know, it depends uh, if, if whether or not they're taking advantage of it. Um, we do see many of them uh, through the benefits office. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, the many of them are um, still very much under mom and dad's uh, kind of purview and so some of the things that they even hear in orientation it kind of goes by the wayside and so you know we, we do work with them in our benefits office to help them make sure their stuff is squared away uh, and beyond that as part of their benefit they're they're eligible for the work study program and uh, and quite frankly it gives a a really nice mixture of, of you know personality and demographics within our office as you saw on our slide we have uh, roughly about 35 36 work studies uh, normally in a fall spring semester and uh, you know I would say a good eight to ten almost of those are student uh, dependents mm -hmm. of veterans and so uh, it really um, it, you know so they, they take advantage in that regard and um, you know and we interview each one of them and I can tell you nine out of ten of them are going to say I'm doing this because of the help you gave me mm -hmm. uh, and what I saw my mom and dad do or still doing and I want to be able to do that for somebody else and um, that's a very cool thing. Beyond that, the, the, the services that we offered are very tailored for veterans. And so uh, we're not excluding dependents from the, the, the vet to vet tutoring and, you know, the academic enhancement. Uh, but there are, there are life programs like that through, uh, throughout the university uh, that they can take advantage of that are geared more yeah. towards a younger uh, first time in college student. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Um, I, you know, I think we have time for just about one more quick question. We, as we've seen with a lot of adult learners making the transition, you know, you said your average student is 34 years old. You're, they're, they're entering a campus where, you know, many of the, the students are 18 years old or, or just starting out. What are some of the psychosocial um, adjustments that may be impacting or maybe on their, their minds that are impacting their ability to acclimate? I think I'll take a stab at that and then I might have Ken, you know, pile on. But, uh, you know, some of the things that I, you know, when it comes to, um, you know, and, and, and some of this is anecdotal, some of it is uh, feedback we did get directly uh, from students, but uh, in some cases it's you kind of read the tea leaves and then, you know, if you don't hear back from the person, you, you can only make a, uh, some assumptions. But, um, you know, students, it's, it's a big financial transition. Mm -hmm. Uh, when you leave the military, uh, and I had one 
one student who shared with me, you know, I went from making $85,000 with a wife and a kid uh, to making $15,000 a year with a wife and a kid on the way, you know, and, and, and just being able to adjust to that and the, the strain that it puts on you uh, where those around you are, in many cases, living living it up under mom and dad's mm. uh, purview and, and, and finances um, is very challenging. Um, you know, for others, um, I'm trying to, it's, you know, it's, um, in some ways it's a, for some it feels like the ability, the, the things they were able to do before and the mm. authorities that they had before you know, especially for like some senior NCOs and officers who transition into school. Um, you know, they leave the military and, you know, in the military I could do anything. I was the guy that people came to. I was I was a fixer of all. I, I had this many people who reported to me and I solved their problems daily and, and now I'm here and I only have to worry about myself yeah. and I don't feel like I matter anymore. I don't feel like this is really what I'm supposed to be doing when when what they're feeling is just a normal part of that transition and adjustment. Yeah. Um, but it's it's tough. It's 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 probably um, worsened by the fact that everyone around them is is much much younger and yeah. you know showing up to class in fuzzy bunny slippers and pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is true. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. I we are at the two o'clock hour, so I I do appreciate you sharing. You know, some of that we all can keep in mind some of the the internal struggles people may be going through, and that we can help smooth over. Many thanks to Jason and Ken for helping us understand ways to support our veteran students today. For those of you who are not already a subscriber with the Florida College Access Network, I encourage you to do so, and that way you'll hear about future webinars, policy briefs, et cetera. So thanks to all for joining us today, and thanks again to Jason and Ken for their service and, and everything you shared today. Much appreciated. Thank, Thank you, Kathy. Appreciate it. Have a good Have day. Have a great day. Take care.